in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 16, please. Matthew chapter 16. We are reading 21 to 23. Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 to 23. I hope you read just three verses of the scriptures, and there is death in these three verses. I'll read Matthew 21, uh, 16, rather, 21 to 23. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Verse 22, I hope you are following. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. The last verse. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. I'll read that last verse again. But he turned and said to Peter, <laughs> This is serious. Jesus turned and spoke to Peter. But when he opened his mouth to talk, he said, get behind me, Satan. Oh, we thought he was talking to Peter. He's deeper. Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Brothers and sisters, Satan can walk through men. Satan can speak through men. Satan can act through men. Satan can impersonate and disguise as if he's another person. Peter was a strong pillar, a strong support as an apostle, as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus. But Satan decided to possess Peter and he was opposing the destiny of Jesus. He was about to silence the purpose for which Jesus came. And at that point, Jesus knew that it was not Peter speaking. Something was speaking through Peter. Ah, brothers and sisters, we pray tonight. Believe me, as I expose this to you tonight, you will pray. Anointing to discern is a must. Capital M-U-S-T for every believer. Anointing to discern between God and Satan, between truth and deceit, between good and evil, between darkness and light. That's what I'm talking about. You must possess this anointing to win the battle in this wicked world, my God. We live in a wicked world. Someone will be sent to you to ask a question. That question is from someone else, my God. Someone will come to you to visit your house. They are sent to come and spy. Someone will send you an email to reply quickly. That email is an information for someone else. Anointing to discern is a must for every Christian. Someone will ask you the question you are not supposed to answer. If you are not anointed to discern what is going on, you will answer and be in trouble. Someone will come to you and discuss someone else's issue, expecting you to speak, and they have a recorder in their body. And they are recording everything you are saying. They make sure they don't record what they are saying. And when they take it out, it's only what you said that will release, my God. But when you have this anointed to design, the Lord will tell you, don't answer. Just behave as if you are stupid. It's not everything that you will know except the Lord reveal. Every believer must have this grace. And I can, if, if, I, if I talk here for two hours, I will give you cases of how God has helped me to use discernment to escape hell, discernment to destroy the gate of hell, discernment to silence the enemy and the avenger, 
this discernment to keep my life safe, protected from evil attacks. You cannot live your life as a child of God without this grace. So I want you to pray for it. <laughs> there was a day, I told, I have many cases. There was a day, I was back in Nigeria, years, more than 20 something years ago, 25, 26 years. I slept and I woke up in the morning to pray. I always wake up very early to pray. I knelt down and I was praying. Please hear this. This is important. As I was, I told the people in the church years back, I know they still remember. I knelt down and I was praying. I'm talking of 1993. Can you imagine? I don't even know how many years back. 1993. And I knelt down. I was praying. It was around 5.30 a.m. And I fell asleep in my prayers. It was a trance. Within three minutes, and I had a vision. And I saw someone bringing something through the back door of the house and said to me, oh, we're celebrating something and we decided to come and give you part of the food to celebrate. And I saw an angel of the Lord just appear. And he said, don't take it. If you take it, you are gone. And I woke up. Brothers and sisters, be alert. Be alert. I woke up from that trance on my knees. Guess what? Within 30 seconds, I had a knock on the door, the kitchen door. It was bean cake they brought. 6 a.m. in the morning. Bean cake. Oh, we are celebrating the 40th day, whatever, whatever, of our parents. We just say, let's give you this to bless you. If they were, they were, we were living in a block of flats. So they were part of one of the flats. We were living in three, under three bedroom flat then. And I immediately that dream came back. I collected the, 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 the bean cake and I, I, I shut the door. Guess what? I went straight on my knees and I destroyed the source and the altar of that thing. Are you asking me whether we, <laughs> we ate the food? No way. We won't. But God exposed the evil plan. Watch this. And I started praying for that family. I told you the testimony before. We used to have a, an home fellowship in that building, in our flat. And these people, they, are, they always drink and make noise and go to parties. They just live their life anyhow. And I started praying for their deliverance. Brothers and sisters, within three months, they all gave their life to Jesus. What I'm talking about is, we don't know what the plan was that day. Who knows what their plan was? Thank God for discerning spirit. God will quicken your spirit. God will tell you things that they will never believe you know. This anointing is anointing to understand times. It makes you to understand seasons. The Bible says in, in 1 Chronicles 12.32, don't forget, 1 Chronicles 12.32, it says, of the children of Issachar, who knows how to understand discern times? This is a season. You must discern what is going on. That's why I'm praying. We have to know. Please understand. Nobody knows what is going on at the moment. But God will reveal to you as you pray. You need to understand the situations around your life. Circumstances. People. You need to understand them. God will have to reveal them to you. There are some snakes that will come in the, in the, in, 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 in the, in the clothes of a sheep. There are some terrible serpents and scorpions that will come like your friend. That's what I'm talking about. God has to reveal them. Believe me sincerely, you cannot be too careful. Forget about carefulness. Only God can give you the watchfulness, not carefulness. Is the one that will trigger that, that thing. Please, when I was praying, the Lord said to me, son, warn them. This is not about suspicion. Suspicion does not work. You cannot suspect people. You have to know. My God, if you are working on suspicion, you will get it wrong. You have to work on discernment. Discernment means God will let you know the truth. My God. It is also called sharp perception. You see, in the scriptures, many a times they will come to catch Jesus to tempt him, to floor him. But we always, the Bible will tell us, and he perceived their plans. 
and he perceives, God will make you to perceive people's plan. He will take you ahead of what they are planning. He will show you where they're going. He will let you know in, 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 in vivid form, clear form, what they are planning, and they will be put to shame. In the name of the Lord Jesus, believe me sincerely you need it. Believe me if Peter was speaking and Jesus was replying Peter, he would have missed it. But Jesus saw behind the voice that this is not Peter, my God. This is the enemy. Before you start fighting with people, pray for discernment. Imagine if Jesus was addressing Peter, he would have missed it. Discernment will make you to, to separate which one is God, which one is Satan when anything happens. Sometimes there are some situations you go through in your life that is God, it's not Satan. I told you my story. When I was coming over to this country, I had a delay for 11 months. I thought it was Satan. And I was fasting and praying as if I'm going to die. Until God revealed to me, it's not Satan, it's me. I delayed it so that you can get prepared for the assignment over there. Please understand what I'm talking about. This is real. When you have this anointing, the devil is in trouble. Without this anointing, hear me, you will make terrible mistakes. You will decide wrongly. Can you imagine when Ananias and Sapphira went and told lies to the apostles? And they, they asked them, are you sure, Ananias, Ananias the, uh, Sapphira, Ananias, both of you, I know you are telling, you are telling lies. And watch this. Ananias, the husband, came, told them lie, and the moment they asked him the question, he fell down and died. He fell down and, died. and the wife came, and they were trying to help the wife. Please tell the truth. And she also lied. What I'm saying is that it is the perception of the apostles that made them to see. As you go tonight, every hidden secret of hell against your life, against your family, against your children, against your ministry, against your, your career, your, your business, against your assignment in life, God will expose them. God will disgrace them. God will give you victory in the name of Jesus. Anointing to desire will release light to every darkness. Believe me. Anointing to desire will, will save your life. Anointing to desire can accelerate your rate of success. When you know what to do and you know the enemy's plan, you know how to deal with them. But if you are in the dark, they can attack you and you will not know. Anointing to desire is the power to overcome what I call schemers. Schemers. There are some people, they are schemers. They can manipulate things and color it. But when you know how to design, you just smile because you know their intention. This is a must for all believers. Believe me. As we pray tonight, pray with all your heart. I don't know whether this is for you tonight. I don't know this. Maybe this is in your office. There are schemers, my God. In your family, there are schemers. Among the people you call friends, maybe they are frenemies, they are enemies. Some of them are there to know what you are doing to teleguide your life. Some of them are there to, to, to expose you to the enemy, my God. Some of them are there just to tempt you. Please remember this. Jesus employed surprises when it comes to this to destroy enemies. Anything they are planning will go ahead of them. The Bible says sometimes what they are thinking in their heart, it will tell them, I know what you are thinking. This is what we call discernment. Are you ready tonight? I don't have much time to expound more. I hope you've got some things. Are you ready tonight? 